103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LP FM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Today is Sunday, uh, June 6th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello, everybody. Thanks, Kentucky. Let me see your shirts. Thanks. We got thanks at the top. Kentucky, let's go. Let's go. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Wow, there's a lot. There's a lot on that. There they are. Any more than I expected. Uh, For uh, our audio audience, we had some T-shirts showing Mm. thanks, Kentucky. Yeah. Uh, Our guests today are um, George Brooklyn, George um, Buffalo, Buffalo. and Dread Pirate Higgs. Oh, boy. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religions, religious faith, holy books, gods, and superstitions. Wombat, what's our topic today? We're going to be talking about something that I don't think many gods are very good at. And I think that's turning the other cheek. Why it's important, funny stories of when we've done it in the past, and why gods should be more prone to doing it if they call themselves perfect and benevolent. But before we get into all of that, before we get into all of that, I got to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs for our weekly invocation. (laughs) (laughs) Gotta have the proper head here. be me, Captain. I shall not want. He maketh me to float in salt water. He steereth me through glassy seas. He filleth my bowl. He steereth me through the straits of noodliness, for goodness sake. I, though I sail through the heaving of tempestuous waters, I will fear not sinking, for thou art with me. Thy mast and thy rudder, they comfort me. Thou preparest a feast before me in the presence of me mates. Thou quenchest my thirst with grog, my goblet runneth over. Truly, past and grog shall follow me all the days of me life, and I will dwell in the galley of the quad forever. Raw, Raw man. Apostoluya, everybody. Apostoluya. <laughs> All right. So, hey, turning the other cheek is what we're going to be talking about, but I want to go into one of our favorite segments for the show. What you guys been doing? What's on your plate? Dread, you always got something interesting. What is the status of <laughs> Operation Chaos? Yes. Well, um, unfortunately, I, so the latest letter has not come back yet from okay. uh, ICBC with respect to, because I argued, of course, that um, the the letter I received from them uh, suggested that the last time I was at ICBC, I was uh, trying to get accommodation for my religious practice, when in fact the band was just a hair accessory, which happened to have the symbol. Right. And we've talked about this, having uh, pitching it out to my mates there to to go with a similar um, hair accessory. If but I lived in with Canada, a, with a I would be first in line like to do this. Yes, exactly. yes, I so, would happily do so this. We're, so we're still there. I'm just waiting to hear back from uh, the mucky muck at uh, ICBC with respect to whatever response he may have to offer. Um, before taking it to the next level. Cool. George, you got some comments. Why are you at time? Yeah, I just, uh, for the listening and viewing audience, I want to explain a little bit about what uh, Dread Pirate Higgs is talking about. Cool. And he, he has, he's actually Dread Pirate Higgs. Why don't you do the explanation? Um, because I'm a little foggy and I, you'll do a better job than me. Uh, the explanation of what? Sorry. Um, what is you're involved in a legal action, if I remember right? Oh so yeah, yeah. Explain yeah. to our listening audience what this is about. Hmm. Well, so really, it's about um, what we perceive as institu- institutionalized religious privilege. Discrimination and that is, in, and it's discrimination, of course. Yep. Um, so I've gone into ICBC wearing my tricorn. Um, as and ask for accommodation uh, based on my religious beliefs in a similar way that Muslims wearing kufis or Sikhs wearing turbans are allowed to uh, um, allowed to and are given uh, accommodation for their uh, religious beliefs. Um, 
And uh, of course, they exclude us, they discriminate us against us. Um, and for the most part, without a really good reason. Um, right. They've, they've said that, well, we're making this accommodation for religions that prohibit you from removing your headgear. And I've demonstrated time and again that there is no religion that prohibits you from removing your headgear. All religion is a choice. And if we started accommodating people based on prohibitions in their um, religions, uh, well, we wouldn't suffer witches to live either, right? Right, right. So, uh, you know, picking and choosing what you're going to uh, um, make accommodations for is, is patently absurd and arbitrary in every way, shape, and it, form. In a sense, it was like the state government's like, hey, we have driver's license, but also no hats, just no hats. But if you're religious, you can wear a hat. But mm -hmm. only if you're these religions. Yeah, it's exactly. like you, there you cross the line. Because yeah. now are you deciding which religions can and which can't, and you're not right. in a position to be able to do that. Larry? And uh, governments shouldn't be in the position of doing that. Although yeah, there are governments all over the world mm -hmm. that have state uh, re religions and authorize this one and not authorize that one, America is not one of those. It's in the Constitution that we have. It's constitutionally supported separation of church and state. Mm -hmm. And all these local and, and federal agencies are ignoring that. And exactly. that's what, what we're against protesting. Mm -hmm. Buffalo wanted to weigh in. What do you think about that situation? Uh, well, it makes no sense to me. It's, it's not logical, it's unreasonable. And uh, somebody has to stir it up in order to make a change toward something that is more reasonable. That's why there's Dread Pirate with the big spoon. And listen, if I told you, if I was in Canada, you would, you tap me and I'd be like, all right, just tell me what to wear. I'll get a new driver's license. I right don't on. care. This is, sound, this is fun. We have a lot of people. I hope you have friends that are helping you out with this. Like, do you have a community that can like assist you? In, well, in, we have, in I mean, part? we are a registered church. I mean, okay. or we're a registered society here, the Church of British, uh, Church of Flying Spaghetti Monster. So there are warm British bodies Columbia. you can tap to be like, please. Warm bodies to tap, door. yeah. Sometimes okay, cool. it's, you know, it's like uh, herding cats, right? Uh, uh, Pastafarians by, by nature are, are not typically sound conformists. Uh, we're pirates, right? So, um, sure. Uh, we're kind of free spirits and so give them some goody be like hey if you do this let's we'll give you free <laughs> alcohol for the next month like that's, that's, yeah. that's that's canadian beer that might that might register you gotta invest a little bit in the pot anyway <laughs> just, just letting this yeah. in george i want to hear from you how you been since uh last week my friend go ahead and pick yourself off mute george buffalo or george george brown, brown. my bad my bad my bad brooklyn george you're raising your hand and you're on mute What's up? George Brown, the two and a half is, is me. And I just want, wanted to um, uh, mention, if it wasn't obvious to our listeners, that although most of us are in the United States, Dread, Hi Dread Pirate Higgs is actually in British Columbia. Mm. And, um, and so he's subject to a... I will say a different tyranny right. than we are here in the yeah. United yeah, he, States. He suffers the Queen's tyranny, isn't That's that? Right. <laughs> yeah. 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 State religion, uh, Church of England. Independence. Right. Independence. I should say Canada has a state religion. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they so, do. So uh, Brown, you asked me. Well, yeah. I, I, you know, uh, my memory can be very short, and right at this moment, the only thing I have to report really is that I have been jousting with bureaucracies in this last week. Oh man! And uh, I, I, I don't, I don't appreciate customer service that is based in the Philippines. Oh, geez, and shots. Okay. That's, yeah, I mean the people are perfectly fine. I've got you know I've got nothing so against. The, yeah, the, the good customer people. service is hard to find. It is, but I tend to find that the ones that have the best customer service also have the worst business operating practices. So like Chick Fil A, <laughs> amazing customer service. Everybody's happy, but then Chick Fil A is like very very extremely religious. Don't want to hire gay people. Like very very almost yeah. misogynistic in terms of their placement of people in their positions. It's just like ooh. Walmart, great customer service. Like everybody, you know, it looks at least sleepy, <laughs> which is not bad. But Walmart, but runs you know, like a whip. I mean, the on the technical side, I, I have hmm. to say that uh, I, I once went to Walmart, yeah, to look up one product online. Okay, 
and those mofos put 115 cookies on my computer. And that is abusive behavior. Wow, that's crazy. Also, a cookie watch, is a your, recording. watch your dirty language. That, you're treading the line, George. All right. I know. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, careful. Buffalo George, how you been? Good. I've been fine. Thank you. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Any insights in science? Are you still connected to the world of academia and, and progresses uh, like in your area of research? Yeah, I still am because I still have a lab with a couple nice. of people. I've got okay. a grant that's running out at the end of this year, and then I'll finally toss in the keys to the kitchen. Okay. <laughs> but, but yes, I am, but I'm sort of removed from uh, the general faculty of the university anymore. I, I interact with some people in, in my uh, immediate area, but... Yeah, I, I am. Cool, um, cool. The, uh, the interesting the thing that came out of that was uh, we had a discussion just the other night with a bunch of colleagues about why Kentucky was so good at handling the delivery of the, of the vaccine, the corona vaccine, that they were early on. And uh, I mean, I had my shots in January. Sure, uh, yeah, really early. And uh, nobody really knows why, uh, except I had this very... I don't know if I told this story before, but I, I had an interaction. I went there to volunteer to help with the vaccination effort. And right. I spent 60 hours there actually at it. But um, I met a, a guy from Pfizer, from the company, and he's in, involved in the uh, epidemiology, the logistics Ooh. of a virus delivery, virus, uh, all aspects of it. And he had a lot of interesting things to say. Uh, one of which was um, that they selected they were looking for places with Pfizer that had cold storage facilities. Makes sense, hmm. since that one is very sensitive to temperature. Right. And they picked University of uh, Kentucky, and they uh, they picked the University of Louisville. I know their cold storage labs. I've been inside them. So yeah, that's really. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that that made sense. But what was interesting then is this, that doesn't necessarily explain the very efficient logistical. Uh, uh, effort to get the vaccine out early, set up the facilities and so forth. And that apparently came because they hired the CEO of Chick-fil-A. Oh, the CEO of Chick-fil-A, Mr. Filet. Yeah, yeah. And, and he apparently organized the, uh, the uh, you know, the systematics of it early on and got it going really fast and, and or, really efficient. Or let's be, let's be clear, he got the, his staff who are unnamed to do the work, and he took the credit. That's that's how a CEO uh, does it. Sure, that's, that's but you know, but why that CEO? I'm not sure. Sure, know, sure, 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 sure. Nothing to do with this, but yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. that was very interesting. Yeah, that's fact. great. Great, 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 great. Good job for everybody. Good job for everybody. I'll Everyone stop, I'll stop the story at that point. This guy said a lot of other interesting things, but uh, nice. uh, yeah. Yeah, typically goes like CEO. How do you turn a wrench? I don't know. I, I pay somebody to do that. That's that's how that's how CEOs <laughs> operate. Uh, Larry, love to know how you've been. Oh, I've been fine. Dude. Uh, staying home, staying in. Uh, actually, I've been going out and eating a lot more than we used to for the Same last here. year. Yeah, uh, and, and that's been great. Um, it's nice to kind of be able to ignore those people that don't wear their masks because they may be vaccinated. They may not be, but you are. That's the important thing because as long as you're vaccinated, you're protected against COVID. And um, I hate to think that half the people walking around out there aren't vaccinated, but they're not a threat to me. They're mm -hmm. a threat to each other, which is a problem. Yeah. But uh, no, I've just been staying busy on online, uh, editing video and audio and and talking a lot on Facebook. <laughs> Larry, I got a hot take about vaccinations, and then we'll get into your trolling. Okay. Recently. But like, My what? Uh, <laughs> the idea My is what? at a certain point, every, what, vaccinations are available and uniquely very available in the United States of America. You're going to uh, reach a point where the people who want to get vaccinated are vaccinated, and the people who aren't don't want to get vaccinated right. and have right. been exposed to the education to why they need to be vaccinated still will not get vaccinated. Right. And at that point, it's like, are we going to hold back society for these people right. or are we just going to continue to move on and let the consequences fall wherever they need to be? Right. Because at a certain point, it's like we need to continue to be 
yeah. a country. Well, we do what we can as far as spreading the word, but ultimately the responsibility is theirs and we need and to move on. It is a personal on. choice. Yeah, yeah, right. right. And, it, and that choice comes with risk like all other choices. Even vaccinating had like a marginal risk and we decided it was nominal and we decided to take it anyway. People who decided not to get vaccinated are like, ah, I'll take my chances. Like, great. I'm not going to hold back an entire economy because... Yeah. You know, okay. You know, well, I have one thing to ask about that. Yeah, what do you think it. Japan should do for the, the Olympics? Olympics? Yeah. For the Olympics, uh, they're They've still hosting the Olympics, they're still they hosting a less than two percent inoculation rate in their own really country. right now, and they're about to invite 150 something other countries there. So, here's my well, opinion. Worse yet, they don't, they're not going to require the athletes to all be vaccinated. That right. doesn't make any sense. No, it doesn't. That's it's nuts. A, That's nutty. That's so nutty. Okay, I didn't know that. You guys are blowing extreme. my mind right now. Anyway, uh, so I'm thinking uh, my other issue with the Olympics is that uh, we should. I know this sounds bad, but we should just have them in like one of three cities for the rest of our lives or the rest of the Olympics, LA, and then like two other cities from around the world, because Thank that's you, where the broadcast is coming out. That's where you can have an Olympics and not worry about a town falling bankrupt immediately afterwards. Just like pick the spots where the cameras already are. They already have the airport there. They already have the infrastructure and just fly them out there and, and do the thing and then they can fly back home. That's all you need. Um, so trolling, Larry, you're a notorious troll. You love starting arguments. I don't troll. You, no, you love spreading the fire. You know when somebody says something that you don't like, you're like, well, let me make some posts. Well, that's not trolling. <laughs> trolling is throwing something out there and you know that's not true or just uh -huh. inflammatory. And then, you know, sitting back and letting people tear themselves up. I don't do that. I respond to it, other oh, trolls. Oh, it's not to, trolling. It's responding. My and I try, to, I try to identify true trolls, uh -huh. actual trolls. If they're actual yeah. trolls, I don't bother with them. So this is, that's the thing I want to talk about. I want to talk about turning the other cheek. Sometimes okay. in life, a message doesn't deserve a reply. And I have a big, I have like, I have enough of a YouTube oh. channel with an audience where every day I wake up with at least five or 10 comments that are like, yeah, I don't want to respond to these. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Well, yeah. There are several things that I won't respond to. And one of them is insults. If somebody is, uh, if I'm talking to somebody and they insult me yes. or use a snide backhanded remark. Yes. Yes. Interested in, in learning anything. They just want to mm -hmm. protect the religion and and, and uh, smack people around. So right. forget that. I'll move on. No, no, no. Absolutely true. I want to talk about like good times when to turn the other cheek, especially on the internet. We can probably start with that. Dread, have you ever had instances where people have just been kind of rude? Oh, what do you my. look out for in terms of like, I'm not going to respond to this. I'm turning the other cheek. Well, any any ad hominem. I mean, when it when right. it comes down to attacking me or uh, my person, it's it's that that's a uh, that's a game ender right there. Um, mm. I've you know back earlier when I first got on Facebook, um, you know, I guess I was not really prepared for how bad it can actually get sometimes, and I allowed myself to uh, to uh, respond, and then quite quickly to learn that oh i better modify myself otherwise i'm just going to be an angry person and likely to develop the same kind of behavior um that i am not uh liking having you know um, put onto me so okay good points yeah. no, i wonder out. where you draw the line so yeah. if somebody said so yeah, I don't take advice from beer from Canadians, but Dread Pirate, he he's one of the good ones. Like, would you accept that as like, oh, he's making fun of my country? Like the thing about thing about what we just did this morning, where it was like, uh, yeah, I, the Queen is sure. in charge of Canada. Like, do you take that as like a, hey, come on, oh Canada, blah 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 blah. No, yeah. I no, I not patriot. not at all. I'm I'm not. I don't consider myself a patriot. Okay. Um, it's. I mean, I just don't go there. Uh, I think the whole idea of ideas being, uh, you know, able to be scrutinized and and made fun of is open game. I mean, we all have strange ideas, and uh, if someone can point out the flaw in something I'm thinking about or uh, some idea I have, I see. You know, good. There's an I opportunity see. for me to learn. It's when it's 
personal attack specifically on you and not just the things that you might calling like. me a retard or ah. uh, you know you, you must be brain damaged because or you're uneducated or that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah exactly yeah that kind hey, of stuff stupid just, nobody likes that eh, whatever yeah nobody you're likes that you're a heathen or heathen yeah, yeah what about exactly. that have you been called oh, no, that's, that's accurate <laughs> actually i've, I've yeah i've uh I've, larry very true, I had, very true. Uh, very true. Is. don't call me a heathen i'd be like yeah, and apostate. Right, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah I, apostate. I had someone <laughs> sure, I'll, i had jehovah's witnesses come to my door uh -huh. in a van and uh they were hopping out just as i was pulling up they're hopping and out the guys to yeah this one older fella is hopping out and uh, he says, hey, I just wanted to talk to you about, uh, you know, the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, hey, man, uh, I'm an atheist at Foxholes, hey? I said, just get back in your van and get out of my driveway. Wow, <laughs> powerful. I love, yep. I love it. 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 That's great. Um, yeah, so when the Jehovah Witnesses knock on my door, they're more like, hey, how's your mom doing? <laughs> because <laughs> my mom's one too so it, it's all part of the family uh, hey buffalo so what's I, up i practiced uh, uh turning the other cheek just the other day um nice and i don't mean to go back to covid but it was a covid situation and that is i asked just uh inquired with a person in our building who's really the manager of the building and he also is the fabricator in the building he's been there for 45 years so that means he's sacrosanct as far as the university uh, is concerned um, about anything he might do is going to be kept quiet but anyway this guy i asked him whether or not he's gotten his uh, his covid shot and it was just an innocent question and he said no i want to see whether or not you people who have gotten a die and I asked myself, well, how should I respond to this? And I didn't. Uh, and so I turned the other cheek, I think. <clears throat> but, uh, you know, recently, I think, uh, I don't know if he's going to get a shot, but his mind has changed because he's probably one of the maybe 2% of people in the building who don't haven't gotten their shot, and he knows that. So when we pass each other in the hall, he doesn't say anything. And so I consider that having been a victory for myself. And that nice. is I was able to not say something thing speak hey that's a great story that's a great story i found that if you were a uh vindictive god that probably would have gone a lot differently and there's so <laughs> many great examples of that george brown from brooklyn do you have a story of turning the other cheek that you can share with us well i i i don't really um i the way i'm wired it, i have a problem i don't always recognize when i'm being attacked okay and and so turning the other cheek for me sometimes is is really difficult because I don't even realize that I'm in a position to to choose to do that or not. Mm. So I, I might get pretty angry in response, you know, like 20 minutes later when I realize what has happened. So oh, it like just, takes time to register even the play. Or after two hey, or three wait a second. insults. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But um, when you do find out that you were insulted, do you then go out of your way to cause justice in the universe and, and flatten some tires? Or do you just be like, <laughs> ah, it's not worth my time? Because that well, is be turning your other cheek. Yeah, it's more like I deliberate as, I mean, uh, yeah, I'll feel hurt, but... Um, I'm I'm also deliberating over how I'm going to respond. Do I want to wound that person? Yeah. Would, yeah. would that be appropriate, you know? Emotionally um, or, or physically, yeah, you got your options, right? Yeah, yeah. So, um, I mean, recently I was attacked by a therapist. Okay. How and, did it feel? Well, um, it, it was funny because uh, she used a technique that a therapist should never use. Uh, you know, a real classic abuse tactic. I mean, just, just because somebody's a licensed therapist does not right. mean that they are a good human being. Or a good and, therapist. <laughs> or a good therapist, that's right. Well, you need, to, so, you need to describe this more because it's sounding very provocative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Well, um, unfortunately, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to right now. So Sure, sure, sure. George Brown's on the rails. That's it's true. It's true. Uh, but the, the the thing that I want to that I want to do is to come back at this woman and say, "You are a disgrace to your profession." What? 
and you or you can just put leave a bad yelp review like yelp tends to be the yeah. passive aggressive way for people to like, remember it's not it's not slander if it's true it's true. <laughs> and you can defend it right well yeah. i'm i'm here in in the bone in the boondocks of you know wild tennessee mm. and And I, I, I keep on learning, despite the fact that I've been here five years, is that um, there's a lot about the South that I just don't understand. Mm. There's a lot. For and me, um, For me personally, George, there was a lot about the South where I had to learn how to turn the other cheek on a lot of things, especially coming from California. And it was in terms of like just weird comments I would get from people and in some cases i'd have to go out of my way to correct it like i would have people be like hey you sound white and i'm like "Ooh, you sound like someone who has not gone outside enough <laughs> and and spoken to enough black people to know that there's a whole spectrum of different people who have you know communication skills and the ones that maybe you don't know don't reflect everybody but that's not their problem that's your problem to be able to go outside and, and meet more people so it's not that i sound white i sound like me and i'm a black happy proud black guy and so like you should go out and just talk to more happy proud black guys that's more reflection on you like i would go out of my way to explain all of that to somebody because i find that very irritable as a comment but i've also gotten comments of like hey you look like you can play basketball oh my gosh i hear that so many times or and then eventually it changes from basketball to football which is more of a question of my body dynamic is like <laughs> okay i'll take it i'll take it i'm not going to go out of my way to correct them like Sure, they have a lot of black football players and a lot of black basketball players, but just because you're tall doesn't mean you play sports. If just because you're tall and black doesn't mean you play a sport on TV or something like that. I'm actually a sport. Yeah, so. yeah, well, uh, you know, I, it's like I have to ask myself, do I really understand where this person is coming from who yeah. I'm talking with? Because um, what I'm finding, I mean, I'm, you know, I grew up in New York City and I lived in uh, the San Francisco Bay Area for 40 years. I'm used to... Uh, an urban context and one that's very diverse yes in terms yeah. of people and i enjoy that and you know i, I enjoy the diversity and so you're i'm touching I'm on a really good point you're touching on a good point george because you have to read the intentions of the people who are offending you right and determine of whether or not based on their their level of intent is it worth turning the other cheek or is there is the ignorance that they're coming from so potentially dangerous or critical that you have to go out of your way to correct them, whether kindly or in an aggressive manner and be like, hey, not not today. <laughs> well, not there's, like this. there's a little more there's a little more to it. I'm, Talk to me. You know, maybe I am in a in an environment which has a an us versus them mm -hmm. view of the world. Sure. And then how do I make my point in response without being perceived as a them? Sure. And discounted completely because I'm one of those guys. Sure. You can just find uh, common ground and, and try to, uh, you know, uh, enlighten that area, what you have in common with the person you're talking to. Hmm. Well, also, thank you, Larry. Yeah. And there's also yeah. the idea in my head of like, at a certain age, there's it takes more and more resistance to change like a personality and is it my job to do that for every single person who i see or should i be like you're a grown adult you should know better how to act than that i'm not i'm just it's easier for me to just take you out of my you know viewfinder in terms of like people i i care about or need to deal with on a daily basis and continue to move on because there's so many other people that i could be spending time with and enjoying time with than the the rascals or the knuckleheads of the world and so i find that when i look outside my window and i see like what's going on in the world people tend to trend towards the the silent uh sane people the silent sane majority but then when i turn on like fox news or like some sort of radio station it's like the crazy fringes that i'm hearing and i'm like this does not reflect what i'm seeing and i'm glad that that is the case at least for now it used to be i was scared for both but now it seems like okay things are a lot better in the long term but i got to choose my fights and that's why i need to turn the other cheek larry what's up larry 
Uh, it's about time for the break. We're halfway sure through is. the show, and you probably need to take that now. Yep, this I is Digital it. Free Thought Radio Hour and WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. 103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Hello, and welcome back to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, this is uh, Doubter 5, Larry Rhodes. And this is Sunday, June 6, 2021. And I'd like to talk about the local atheist group in Knoxville, Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK. Great founded in 2002, we're in our 19th year. ASK now has over a thousand members. We have weekly Zoom meetings and in-person meetings. So be sure to go to Meetup or KnoxvilleAtheist.org and find out more about it. Our in-person meetings are at Barley's Taproom Pizzeria in Knoxville's Old City in the, on the patio. Uh, you can find us in Facebook, Meetup, KnoxvilleAtheist.org or just Google Knoxville Atheist. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your start one, one. Right. Uh, where do you want to pick up there one bit hey we're talking about turning the other cheek i want to talk about why don't gods do it more i think we can pick i think we've picked on the christian god so much times but it's always a classic i don't get old it doesn't get old with me i've noted a number of times that uh christian gods or including the the jewish god and uh islamic god basically variations of like the same Abrahamic God, to be honest with you, mm -hmm. or just depending on what version you update you're, you're talking about, even like Mormon gods, which are its own offshoot, but very, very not in the mindset of, yeah, you did something bad, but I'll let mm -hmm. it go. Like that's not that kind of flavor. And I feel like, um, gods that don't practice turning the other cheek or at least, uh, holy books that don't depict their God being willing to do that afford humans the 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 idea that they don't have to as either especially if they're mm -hmm. being told to be as godly as possible and mm -hmm. i feel like if you are perfect and benevolent being able to forgive without any sort of recompense it should be a mark of your benevolence and if you lack that that's a problem dread pirate what do you mm -hmm. think well it's interesting and i hear this a lot um Amongst people, interchange between um, turning the other cheek and eye for an eye. That mm. those two phrases are arbitrarily interchangeable depending on the situation they want to justify. Mm. Right. And it's, a, as you say, it's a justification for other people's behavior who are basing their morality and um, on, on, a, on a book rather than on um, found uh, good reasons. Sure. George Brown, what do you think? Oh, well, I want to ask you, uh, Dread Pirate, about that. Um, you know, an eye for an eye and turn the other cheek. Um, when, a, when a person flip-flops back and forth between those, how do you respond? Good question. Well, I just, I mean, I point out the hipparga, the, the contradiction. Nice. I say how... Yeah. how you know, how do you determine under which circumstances you apply the one or the other? Is it based on how you feel about it, or is there some objective? And has, has um, and often and often that often that question sometimes is jarring enough that you see the eyes kind of go up and to the right and uh, the the aporia, you know, the the, sure, the sense. Sure, of, sure, sure. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh, I guess I never really thought about A thoughtful it. Thoughtful moment. So, do you think you got through? Hard to say, um, you know, most of the times I don't, uh, you know, once people know where I stand on it, yeah. they don't come back at me. I'm interested. Kind of, I'm not going to put up with it. So un unless they're willing to have a conversation hmm. um, about it, then, then they just don't even bother talking to me. <laughs> so I'm interested in hearing from Larry on this. What do you think, Larry? 
Well, uh, on the turn the other cheek, or, or uh, talking about you know picking two different passages that are polar opposites, I've always felt that um, the Bible was like a more like a Rorschach test, you know those ink block tests. Yeah. Uh, that you, it really doesn't have an image on it, but the the viewer supplies what they think the image says. And what you go to the Bible and you come back with says more about the person reading the Bible oh, than it does the Bible itself. Like because you can you can pull love, you can pull hate, you can pull discrimination, you can pull yep. destruction or creation. Ignorance, willful ignorance, sometimes. anything, yep. anything you want mm -hmm. out of the Bible to justify your previously held uh, exactly. conceits. Yeah. Uh, the other thing was that I've got a, a cartoon that I like to post. It's a little kid in Sunday school that raised his hands. You know, it says if God tells us to to forgive and turn the other cheek, but then he turns around and, and roasts his enemies forever. You know, he punishes them. He doesn't forgive or forget, you know, if you don't believe in them or you do wrong or break a, a commandment, you know, he puts you in hell and tortures you. You, and it's not I'm taking off on it, but it, hell is not a remedial punishment like uh, the Department of Corrections. You know, right. it's, supposed, mm -hmm. it's not supposed to correct your, your behavior. It's paying it's for the point. For yeah. the eternal um, punishment for finite crimes. Yep. And it's it's just pain for pain's sake. Yep. It, you know, it's, it's just t torture, period. Now, no, no Larry, reason. I'm glad you brought this up. I do have some opinions on hell, because if you were to tell me that there was a there was a whole all of all of human history's grammar Nazis are probably so annoying that they will probably go to heaven and I don't want to go to heaven with them. Right. <laughs> if heaven exists. And so no. if you're going to ask me like, who's in heaven? Well, it's probably Republicans. <laughs> it's probably wow. West Federal Baptist church protesters. It's probably grammar Nazis and people who use coupons at grocery stores. Cause Oh, why are you take up all my time? What's going on here? Whereas yeah. hell who's yeah. in hell? It's like, you got the rock stars, you got the esports players. You probably got you yeah. know ping pong guys. You got the cool people there. I'm like, okay, between these groups and I have to spend an eternity there. Yeah, I'll get used to the flame. I'll get. I'll, I'll, it won't burn after. Uh, after a certain point, I won't bother me. And if it does bother me, then I'll be like, uh, at least I'm not around a bunch of grammar Nazis. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just me, just like it's not a bunch of Tyrone. It's around. Uh, like, and there's several these special exemptions, you know, for believers versus. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm it's being like little, saying that uh, yeah. since. Since Hitler was a Christian, he was Catholic, you know, he'd be in heaven where yeah. all of the Jews that he killed would mm. be in, in hell because they didn't accept Christ exactly. as their savior. And so, you know, it just makes no sense. And so I was joking around before, but I think this is my most salient point, like two things. One, I could not be around people for eternity who are okay with a, another group of people burning and, and suffering for all of eternity and are okay with it because they're in paradise. Like in my head, knowing that other people are suffering for all eternity for a finite crime and I'm experiencing paradise, I can't experience it. That's in my head. A uh, complete contradiction, and like any of the people who yeah. are happy, and if you forget, all, or, if you, are some of the worst people ever, in my opinion. If the, if God makes you forget those people, so you won't be tortured by their memory, are you still you? Exactly. I mean, if my mother knew I was in heaven, in hell, and she was in heaven, but yeah. God made her forget me. Yeah, right. not the person she used to be. Yeah, you're just thinking around on a brain, and now that's not even the person anymore. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm impressed. Well, Buffalo George, I would love to hear from you. I haven't heard it. I haven't heard for you a while. What's up? I, I've often, uh, I, I've often wondered that maybe the Christians believe that heaven is the other cheek, and it's always there. But of course, you have to believe to get in there. Um, but the, the thing that's a question that's always been of interest to me is how do the Jewish people handle this? Because they don't really believe in heaven. No, mm. They got Sheol and some other thing going on there, right? But what, yeah. is that, what does that mean? I don't know. Well, you know, they love making up words. So chutzpah, you know, uh, sh no, no, no. Oh, I don't know. What heaven in the all Jewish is. Well, I don't know. Um, I'm, not about, I'm not talking about secular Jews. I'm talking about, uh, for example, the, uh, the very strict Jewish people. What's their, what's the sure. counterpart? Well, we have a Jew. Well, we have a person who was raised Jewish here, sort of George Brown. What do you think? 
Well, that's why I uh, raised my electronic hand just now. Um, you know, I really don't know, but my son, who's checked into this more than I have, tells me that there is a sort of a Jewish heaven and, and a vague concept of a hell. That's what my son says. <laughs> I, I really, I couldn't care less myself. I, I think the idea of both is just totally absurd. And, and to me, um, if there is such a thing as a God, the God would not allow a hell to exist. So the yeah. whole damn thing is so contradictory that it's a hey. loving God. Yeah. Yeah. I would also say this too. Um, the things that make God upset are rules that he himself made up and it's, it's sin in the sense. And like, if you write the book on what is a sin and what isn't a sin, you have control of what is essentially making you upset or what you're choosing not to do yet. You make beings that are capable of doing the sin. So like if flying 30 feet in the air was a sin, don't give us, don't give, you know, animals wings. But if you know, <laughs> I don't know, flipping the bird is, is a sin. Don't give us middle fingers. <laughs> <laughs> or is that double park <laughs> stuff like that like there's or making uh, homosexuality gay i mean yeah stop sin, making gay but people then having like people gay. born into homosexuality yeah, yeah yeah stop making gay people if you don't like gay people like there's a right. way to manufacture that yeah. through nature rather than yeah. making it the thing and then saying there's something wrong with you your entire life right. yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I think it's i think it's because christianity is stuck in a long history mm. That is, you got you got to maintain the history, or you lose the whole concept, and and the pews won't be as full. Sure, right. you got to keep those pews full. But I also feel like the idea of turning the other cheek is not a particularly attractive idea for a very powerful being that you should have a lot of authority for, right? Like from our big ambiguous authority figures, we like to have decisive actions clear consequences, even if they're harsh. And you can use that if you're on the lower end of the totem pole to say, well, don't do the thing I don't like you to do because God doesn't like you to do that thing. And that's <laughs> very, very powerful. Like mm -hmm. a, a truly benevolent God that is, you know, willing to forgive without, you know, sacrificing their own son a <laughs> bloodily on, yeah. on, on a human sacrifice cross. It's just like, no, it's, you don't even need to pray for that. Like, that's not even a big deal. That's a very hard God to convince people to join the military for, or to, to, to persuade people to buy a certain kind of food or shift the economy in a certain way, or keep mega churches funded. That's a hard God to sell. And I think that goes a long way with it. I, yeah, wish I don't we... think that go for it, George. I was going to say, I don't think that Christianity can ever accept evolution because it's turning a lot of this over to nature. Mm. And, uh, and, and that's a problem, of course, because I think because of the long history that the Christian religion has to maintain in order to keep it useful. Sure, yeah. I also feel like it affects parenting as well. And I, I don't have affects children. what? Parenting, parenting. To have parenting. God as the model of like the ultimate father, but to have this, you know, sort of vindictive, jealous, explicitly jealous being who doesn't turn the other cheek to like any sort of offense. Like even if you worship a different God, that's a punishable crime worthy of being sent to hell for. And it's like mm -hmm. my way or the highway, you gotta, you have to respect me or nobody else. That's a, if we had a more forgiving God, if we had a God that's more likely to turn the other cheek, I think we'd have parents that'd be able to instill that in their kids a bit more. And we'd have a less polarized society, maybe a society that's willing to, you know, manage offenses if they can understand the intent of where they came from. George, what do you think? George Brown. I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, all right. <laughs> Dred, Dred, I'm going to throw something out at you. Uh, sure, sure. What do you think if God was more, the Christian God, if he was a little bit more Canadian, <laughs> would that be, well, well, yeah. What would that look like? And how would that be better? Well, you know, he'd be apologizing a lot more for the bad stuff he did. And uh, God that apologizes is a huge step. That's incredible. <laughs> that blew my mind. It's like, Oh geez, yeah. I made all these gay people, but I, Oh, okay. Well, I'm sorry about that guys. Okay. Gay people. I'm are sorry okay. I didn't good. I'm sorry. I didn't do enough. Good, a good, good enough job on you guys. Like, how can I make it up to you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, I, that's, the, not the, that's the God I want. Hey, yeah, 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 and then, yeah. Then, uh, then have nature be your God. There you go. 
exactly. then have nature be your god uh I, well that that's that's the, the essence of it right yeah it is because we essence. we change over time so uh yeah you know, right. not not that we're necessarily getting better or that we're on some rung of the ladder right um but uh and, and i'm actually reading a very I, I think i mentioned the book i'm reading uh how the how the how the mind works by stephen sure. pinker yeah and right now he's he's talking about uh, life as a bush rather than a ladder and um it's really really fascinating reading i found that there's no facts always beat fiction it's just a question of you have to learn the fact and so like when you look at god as as like this fictional character in in in, in many holy books it's like yeah it's very cruel very powerful but if you look at nature whoa like some of the most not necessarily cruel but like the most uncaring destruction of complete series of animals every day is like yeah. oh you made yourself a little bit too brown this whole, 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 whole extinctions yeah. like huge bio biospheres uh several uh yeah extinction well, events that have taken more than 90 percent of the entire life on earth i see uh, i mean yeah. it's, yeah. it's totally uncaring yeah. it has no direction and no uh conscious no entity right no agency Human. like yeah. a fun game so maybe fun. though maybe a fun game <laughs> a fun game wow that's for fun for nature if it, it was an anthropomorphic being but like well, that's a fun game oh it's, yeah survival mm -hmm. is the game we're playing right now and we can get so used to surviving with comfy chairs and air conditioning that mm -hmm. we forget that we're doing it right yeah. now but that is what's going on outside mm -hmm. every day hey what's up larry larry i see you yeah Oh, we were talking about evolution, and it, it's a bush, not a not a ladder. Uh, one of the things yeah. that kind of get to me when I'm online is that so many people think that we have evolution right. has ended with right. us. We're here, we are. Right. You know, this is we're the best because right. everything else was earlier and older and not not as good as us. The dinosaurs were around for a hundred. 50 million years that's We've what you were googling i wanted to know what you were googling million years no no i, I didn't need to google <laughs> that but uh, think about the lowly cockroach it's been around uh, the termites sure. uh they're they're heft a lot more prolific than we are yeah. uh, there are a lot of success, successful evolutionary um ends so if you call it in because it's now but yeah. evolution is continuing yeah. even for us we no, don't know what absolutely. the next humans are going to look like but they'll probably be bio what is it electronically enhanced uh, going forward we'll do our own evolution at this point but it doesn't mean we'll stop biologically ev evolving exactly. everything else that will that's in the biome and it's, yep. and it's interesting too that uh um, it, Stephen makes this point is that uh, we may see, be seeing a slowdown in biological evolution because we do occupy every eco, uh, ecosystem on the planet niche and in that uh -huh. our evolution is now driven largely by culture yep. um, and so evolution is Stand taking by. place right before us and it's a Darwinian mm -hmm. evolution it's just not in our genes anymore it's in our memes right absolutely yeah and i absolutely believe that human beings have a proclivity to be very egocentric when we look at history and so we think history began when humans started. Very what? right humans began when oh, history began when humans began we can even see that at microcosm i've seen world history textbooks that have started at 1942 because they're 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 taught in american schools so <laughs> <laughs> 1942. Yeah, it's just like Columbus sails the ocean. Well, I mean, it, you know, we've been around at least uh, 200,000. Yeah, but carbon dating take us a lot You're further back up than that. So the information about humans and the female and, and everything goes way back uh, because we can we now know how to interpret it. Mm -hmm. And there were at one time on Earth's history, there were at least five humanoid species. We were just one of them. Mm -hmm. And there have been well, 10 or 12 uh, that didn't overlap in time. So, yeah. um, you know, mm -hmm. it, we're, we're just the ones that won the battle for supremacy, basically. Mm -hmm. Right. But there have been uh, quite a few other humanoid species. Sure. But I'll and tell you, even um, the um, across reading of uh, Neanderthals. So <laughs> yeah, I know I have a small percentage in me too. My DNA. So who are all these do, people with Neanderthals in their bodies? This is this is bizarre. This is a bizarre concept. Okay, well I'm gonna have to look this up later on. But yeah, that's kind of bizarre that everybody just knows they have cavemen 
in them. That's crazy. No, anyway. really. I, I sent off my DNA to have it yeah. analyzed and it came back with like 2% yeah. Neanderthal. Nice. Well, that would be on your mom's uh, side at least. Came, right? <laughs> Don't talk about my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about mitochondrial DNA. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Your mama. All right. Hey, I would say this though. Uh, we were talking about the intent of offenses is what dictates whether or not I determine if it's a means for me to step in and try to make a correction or to let it go and just move on and just either write off the person or just write off the action, right? It's, it's about the intent. And mm. what I found with what nature does is there's no intent to what nature's doing. So like when a bad thing happens in nature, right. like a thunderstorm happens and I lose power, I'm not angry and I don't need to turn the other cheek to that. It's sort of just like, I can't be vindictive against nature. It's just a thing that happened. But if somebody came and cut my power cables mm -hmm. to my home, I'd be like, I need to have a conversation with you or call the cops. That is when I'm not willing to turn the other cheek because you've, you've, you've made my life inconvenient. You may have caused me harm. And so if I can avoid mm -hmm. needless harm, I will do so. But if I can avoid uh, needless harm, I'm going to step up and make a correction. I would think that would be my standard. Dread, we talked about what's your standard for when you decide to go for an eye for an eye or turn the other cheek. For me, it's can I avoid needless harm? If I can't, then I'm going to step in and make a point that what you, the harm you're causing me is not necessary in my life. But I'm either going to write you yeah. off or write off the act. I, right. For, for me, I'm 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 really non. I don't like confrontation, mm. so I I tend to, you know, tend to let go a lot more than perhaps I should, just in my own best interest. Mm. Um, because of course, sometimes people take that as a sign of weakness. And then uh, double down on their uh, uh, intent uh, to, to harm or malign you in some way. Um, so it's it's a bit of a balancing act to yeah. try and figure out or, or to consider what the repercussions of acting or not acting are, and then you know apply uh, some thinking to that to, to uh, ultimately come to an answer. But there certainly isn't just any hard and fast rule. It's a it's a George Brown, your thoughts? You know, I, I'm going to throw out a little mini topic here. Um, we, we, I think the, the word troll came up earlier. Um, I used to be involved in a free software uh, group on Usenet, very lively discussion. And um, we were invaded by a couple of trolls. And one, and, and these people were extremely disruptive. They attacked people. And what happened with me was that one of the trolls adopted my persona and in my persona attacked other people. Wow. Oh, that is rough. Mm. And, and that, now, that mm. what would you guys do if that were you? Mm. Yeah. Would you turn the other cheek? I mean, this is, it's like exploding in my head. So like, in my uh, opinion, well. thoughts, words can cause harm. And, uh, and if someone's using my, my personality or information to, to, to represent my, me in a way that I didn't consent to, that's harm. And I'm gonna go out of my way to figure out a way to fix that, but also apply protection so it doesn't happen again in the future. But that's something I would not turn another cheek to. Dred? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I've certainly had that happen. And uh, somebody taking over my messenger and 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 chatting with my friends, pretending wow. to be me, and wow. uh, and and saying, "Well, you know, uh, I just won one hundred and seventy five thousand dollars. You just got to send me a check for four hundred, and I'll cut you in on it." Or you know, like just that kind of crazy stuff. Some weird but scheme. Typically, uh, it's the consistency of a person's behavior that I note, and when something, when you see something in a, in a messenger. You, if you know the person well enough, mm. you figure out, you know, this isn't, this is sounding off. This, this, this isn't Ty. Ty okay. wouldn't speak to me this way. And, or Ty's grammar, for instance, might be, uh, you know, I, I know that you're, you're, you, you have good grammar and your, your spelling is good. And uh, okay. so if I see words that are jumbled or syntax that isn't um, correct, uh, it's always a good, uh, for, yeah, you look at the world right? skeptically, even from your friends, even text messages from your friends, oh, you apply a healthy amount of skepticism to. And I think absolutely. that's absolutely more of a demonstration of why skepticism is very important. So that's mm -hmm. great points, Chad. 
Um, That's not how you solve the problem once you've gotten that label. Mm. Yeah, you got to put protections on after the fact, too. You gotta, oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. Change the passwords. <laughs> I would say this. Stuff. I like the idea of consistency because I do have, I have friends that do not raise my blood pressure. I have friends that do, right? <laughs> and whenever I have an engagement with a friend that does raise my blood pressure, I'm always like, why am I friends with this person? <laughs> right, right. Uh, I yeah. have friends with this. Not only do they have to earn your friendship, they have to earn the the right to keep it. Yes, right. and then you, and yeah. for a while, until even like graduate school, I realized my friendship has value, and I can make friends with anybody. So why sure. am I making friends with people who are deliberately causing me harm, health wise, mm -hmm. mentally wise? Mm -hmm. That's not good mm -hmm. for me. It's right. easy enough for me to preen the number of friends that I have so that I just have the core that I do trust and care about. Or family for that matter. Yeah. And family, family too. Exactly. You need that if they're destructive or, or S acidic toward yeah. you. Mm -hmm. I'll tell yeah. you this family isn't just blood, you know, uh, family right. is people that you choose to be with and, and have deep yeah. relationships with. Absolutely. Yeah. George Brown, what do you got? Um, you know, I just wanted to say that at my advanced age, I've learned that, um, I, I simply need to eliminate toxic people from my life. Nice. I, I can't afford to have friends like this, even if they are very interesting to me, they're still toxic. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's actually yeah. why I left the band. Um, I was in, um, I'm, I sing the blues and we've been playing together for oh, a couple of years and every and I was finding that every practice, we practice for two hours, but the first uh, half hour would be taken up in, you know, kind of calling down groups of people and it, and it got worse and worse um, to the point it was just like, it was outright discrimination and yeah. bigotry. And then there was a, a whole angle of pseudoscience, uh, homeopathy and, and all these crazy things that I would spend then you know, the first half hour of a practice, um, either saying something, and I was the only one in the band that, you know, came at it from a skeptical point of view. So I would be, you know, trying to have them like epistemology, doing street yeah, epistemology. Yeah, yeah. But then it just, it, it got so tiresome that, yes, you know, absolutely. if I'm, I dread, <laughs> I dread going to band practice. And, and so eventually the, the, the last day I said, okay, what do you so-and-so's want to play? Uh, or shall we start playing? Because I've had enough this conversation. And so of course, as the singer, I was picking the song. So I put, uh, so we did uh, Stuck in the Middle with You. And that was okay. my last practice. <laughs> yes. Sometimes well, cultures evolve. Like I, we've talked about that before in the show. And if they become toxic, it's good to remove yourself from because there's yeah. so many other cultures and you can make your own culture too. And I think exactly. that's a really important point. And that's a good way to show that you turn the other cheek because you weren't, you didn't go in there with, ha ha, this is my last practice and I'm pumping in gas that's toxic into this room. We're all going yeah, down yeah. with me. <laughs> it's like, no, you're just like, I'm removing myself from this situation. Yeah, exactly. You guys be you, right? I, I like that. And there's good yeah. examples of that. God, learn from that. <laughs> okay. Wh whichever God heard me, Larry, uh, that's the end of the show. Would you mind uh, uh, getting ready to take us out? You can play the ending music and start the lights. Dread, where can we find your stuff at? <laughs> So you can find me on my YouTube channel at Mind Pirate, uh, P Y R A T E, hmm. and I live stream this show on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or Pacific Daylight Time, depending on what it is. Nice. And uh, yeah, please uh, sign up, and I need uh, 10 more subscribers, and I can nice. do some, uh, uh, you know, do some modifying of my channel and whatnot. So. Nice, if nice, you, nice, yeah. Nice. If you like it, uh, sign up, and uh, yeah, I'll be here every Sunday as long as we're doing the show. Yeah, Very absolutely. Cool. Yeah, I love doing the show. <laughs> Buffalo, what's uh? You said you had a lab. Is there a good science thing we should check up on before next week? Is there anything that you would recommend? Like, hey, here's something cool. Chick Fil A guy, CEO. Should we Google that? Like, what would you recommend that we uh, look into before next week? How can we better ourselves through education? Oh, um, I don't know. I've been reading some stuff on how. Um, um, how the the DNA of a child can in fact be uh, uh, changed by because of uh, serious trauma. 
Whoa. And that's, that speaks mm. to the fact that, you know, that's a nature versus uh, nurture thing. Yeah. But, that's but a lot, they, that's uh, a lot marking thing. Uh, that, that uh, you know, the post translational, where once the DNA makes the protein uh, or just in between those steps, there can be modifications and they can be altered by extreme behaviors nice nice so that affects criminality that affects a lot of things but it's it's an up-and-coming area of science mm, cool. and that's the question of how you know our, our dna is not fixed and how can it be changed by nurture by extreme right. nurture and there is evidence for it now that's pretty interesting. i dig it i dig it i follow it george brown i hear you breathing on the mic <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i apologize and i assure you i will try to use a directional microphone next time got- i come in But anyway, um, following up on what George Buffalo just said is um, I have been looking into cluster B personality disorders. That's a psychological uh, criteria. It's very interesting to me. And and what I wanted to do was just um, recommend learning about uh, people who have a very negative effect on the rest of us. Cool. Not bad. Then coming to in terms of that, yeah. Larry, I think yeah. that's a great point. Larry, why don't you take us out? We got like 20 seconds. Where do we find your stuff? Okay. Uh, don't worry about it. You're already on that channel. <laughs> Larry, what do you got? <laughs> well, my own content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for a radio show archives of atheist songs. These are articles, these shows, all of that will be found on digitalfreethought.com. If you can, if you go to YouTube, you can find my channel by searching for Doubter 5 or Larry Roads. My book, Atheism, What's It All About, is available on Amazon in uh, electronic format or paperback. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. We'll answer them on future shows. If you have trouble leaving religion behind, you can go to recoveringfromreligion.org and find people that will help you. If you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. This has been the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody's going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it and enjoy your life. We'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Okay, see you.